Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, Steve Erickson is training us on how to increase our coaching income by being our prospects' trusted advisor. Could you all please unmute? Uh, could you all please mute yourselves? There's some background noise coming through. Uh, Steve, I've got a couple of questions that will enable us to get to know you at a more personal level. Uh, uh, first, question, first question is, um, uh, we all have passions outside work. And, uh, I know your work is helping coaches, but what is your extracurricular passion? My coaching Sorry, my coaching, my passion. See, I even, <laughs> I even get that wrong now. My, uh, because coaching truly is my passion. But actually, outside of uh, of uh, the coaching and the work that I'm doing, it's scuba diving. Uh, I'm a qualified rescue diver, and uh, I have lived in what I would call a holiday par of vacation paradise uh, for five years. And uh, I used to go out scuba diving all the time. I absolutely love it. So yes, I really have a passion for that. Mm, okay. Are the waters in Norway not a little on the cold side? That's why I say I used to live in a vacation paradise where I used to do it a lot. I do not do it a lot in Norway. It's far too cold here. So. Oh, yeah, I can only imagine. Well, yeah. well, my home country is Ireland, and I know what swimming in the Irish Sea is like, and you're a lot colder in Norway than that. Yes. Okay, Absolutely. question number two. I know that you've got an MBA, but you never broadcast that. You never yeah. really talk about that um why are you keeping it such a secret you know that's an excellent question and uh, i do have people who ask me that from time to time and it's really because the mba itself is not really helping me in my coaching it is i don't find that when i'm speaking to people that me saying hey i got an mba they go oh wow you got an mba i have to take your services if anything, it's intimidating and it turns them off because I deal with coaches who are very heart-centered and they're very, um, they're, very uh, they're very passionate about what they do. And when they meet people who are going and saying, shouting from the rooftops, I got an MBA and everything, they think this is far too high for looting for me and it's not really applicable to me because I don't have that kind of formal education. So that's why I don't really talk about it very much. It's too corporate really. You're a modest Norwegian. <laughs> Thank you. Along with us modest Canadians. Yes. Uh, attendees, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, type them into the chat and uh, Steve will answer them at certain points during the course of his talk. If he misses you for whatever reason, then I'll jump in and remind him that there is an outstanding question that needs his response. Uh, later today, later today, Vancouver time, uh, you'll be sent a link to the recording of this talk. Uh, and, uh, and despite that, I encourage you to take notes because the very act of taking notes will increase what you absorb by as much as 30%. Steve, are you ready to uh, share screen and, and rock the stage? I am absolutely ready to do that. And so I'm going to- you. Stage is yours. Right, just to make you aware that I muted the uh, pinging when people are wanting to get into the room, so pay attention to people wanting to go in there. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much. And I think you can see my screen now with the slide on. Yes, we can. Awesome, so hi there. This talk is about um, how to 5X your coaching income by selling what your clients actually want. And it doesn't really matter what kind of clients you have. They, uh, I'll explain exactly what they mean by what they want. Um, my name is Steve Erickson. I'm calling myself the midlife solopreneur and I'm the midlife solopreneur because I'm in midlife myself. And it was a really big change to go from when I considered myself a young person to saying, actually, now I've reached midlife. For me, that was when I, uh, my kids actually moved out uh, of house and both of them went to university uh, or my, actually my, my uh, older son started working and my daughter went to university. And uh, I thought, OK, I need to start calling myself a grown up in midlife now that they actually have grown up themselves and everything. So. Uh, so that was midlife for me because midlife is more a state of mind than anything else. I met people who are 60 who consider themselves to be in midlife. And I met people at, at 35 who say, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely hit midlife. So 
what I want to talk to you about is, well, first of all, what I'm teaching today will help you to connect and truly understand your prospects and clients. And that is so crucial, right? This is a concept that I've been using for years. I used it across different businesses. I've seen it in operation in many other businesses and with many other coaches, and it works. And it works because it's authentic. Authenticity is so important in business because people can tell when you're not being genuine. They, they, they know when you have other intentions, when you're putting your own needs ahead of their needs, when you're putting your wants ahead of their wants. Now, that might not even spread initially. That might uh, take a while before it becomes public knowledge, but it will become public knowledge. So you're not really setting yourself up for long-term success if you're not authentic. And what I'm teaching you today, it will have your prospect saying, finally, someone truly understands me. They truly understand what I need. Okay, now I'm teaching you this so you can authentically uh, connect with people, with your prospects and with your clients. And you can do that from a place of empathy and giving value. Now, let me repeat that. You can authentically connect with your prospects and with your clients from a place where you have empathy with them, not sympathy. Sympathy is when you commiserate with them, but empathy is understanding what their emotions are and what they are going through. And then you give them value based on your understanding of what they're going through. So this presentation is for you. If you are struggling to get clients, you want to earn more money, and you want to help people actually achieve their dreams. And it's also for you if you're reaching the wrong types of clients, the kind of clients who don't excite you, the kind of clients who don't motivate you, they're your problem clients, and you feel like they're always shifting the goalpost of what you're trying to do with them. And, and so if you're having any kind of issues with that, this is a good presentation for you to actually take a lot of notes and pay attention to the, the methodology and the psychology behind what we're doing. So why do I care so much about this? Well, my father went bankrupt when I was young. Um, I was uh, seven years old and when he went bankrupt, I st he stayed in bankruptcy for 10 years. This was back in Norway, 1973. And when he stayed in that bankruptcy, it was actually because of a big company saying there was a gas company, uh, oil and gas company saying we're closing down all our little individual gas pumps by the individual store. So he lost the gas pump he had outside his store and people had to drive this very small community. They had to drive for 15 minutes to a different gas station. And when they came to that gas station, there was a supermarket next door and he lost all of his business literally overnight. And so I grew up with this feeling of small business is good, big business is bad. He tried later on to be um, successful in business again. After 10 years, he was allowed to try again, but he didn't have access to the knowledge that we have today. He was struggling to figure out what he needed to do. And when I saw all of the struggle that he went through to, to do all of that, I vowed that I would not let it happen to me. So I got an MBA. Yeah, I went and I did first four years of undergraduate studies and I did a two year MBA in Manchester in the UK. But here's what they don't teach you. Right. Actually, they teach you to be a good corporate employee. They're not teaching you to be a good entrepreneur. Right? I learned a lot about management accounting and project management on a large scale and how you're valuing big projects and, and different things. I learned about brand advertising, you know, all the things I learned in, in business school about advertising was to do with when you're a big brand, when you are somebody like Sony, you know, and you want to advertise the rules for companies like Sony is completely different to what the rules are for a small business. But I only realized this when I tried to start my own business. So here's the thing. I started a business. I ran that business for around three years. And in that business, I had over 3,000 clients. And I sold the business. But I got tens of thousands of dollars when I sold the business. Incidentally, this was in 1999 and at the height of the internet boom. And I actually quadrupled my income overnight by becoming an, an independent consultant in the internet space. But 
then I realized that other people were selling their business and they were getting hundreds of thousands and millions for their business. So I call it my failure to succeed. I didn't fail in business. I didn't go bankrupt, but I failed to be successful in that business back in 1999. So for me, that was an epiphany. So in 2000, I started really thinking, what should I have done differently? I had all of this knowledge. I have the MBA. I have the desire. I knew what I was doing with the business. I've won awards five times for being the best uh, company in my particular industry. Yet I failed to capitalize on that. So I spent 20 years and over $100,000 in the space of around five years studying marketing, psychology, persuasion and really trying to hone in. What should I have done differently? What could I do to be successful? And over that time, what I'm teaching you now has been used again and again in my own business to generate clients, to generate customers, and the companies I've been working with. One of the things I did was I ran uh, together with my wife, a small local advertising magazine and I have it here, just a little leaflet like this. And we published ads inside of it, black and white, and then later on in colors. We had hundreds of clients during that time. And some of those ads were so effective that the advertisers stopped advertising with us. So that's why I call it some ads being too effective. When you are doing so good that they're just saying, we can't handle any more clients, we're full up. So we're stopping paying you any money for advertising. Goal achieved, yay. And also, where's the next customer? We have to go out and get that. So, so that's my little introduction. I would say that there are three main ingredients to success when you are a coach, or in any business really. You need to attract. This is attracting prospects, attracting potential clients. You need to connect with them on an emotional level. So they go, yay, I want your service. And you've got to convert them. It's not enough that they're saying, I want your service. They actually have to have good enough reasons to buy your service. So they really, really become your client, your high-end client. And the best way to attract and to connect is this, using emotion. Let me say that again. The best way to attract and connect the fastest way, the most profitable way, is to use emotion. Facts and figures do not sell, but emotions do. Just think back to any kind of, especially big purchases, not, not the kind of purchases you do in the supermarket, but even then, actually, why are you picking one brand over another? It's because you like that brand, because you want that brand, right? because if it makes you feel good, but any kind of purchase that you do, when you're buying a car, why do you buy the particular model of the car? Emotions have a big impact on anything you do. They did, the Institute of Practitioners in Advertising in the UK did 1400 case studies. And they found that 31% of campaigns that had an emotional content were successful. But the ones that used logic and facts and figures, 16% were successful. That's a big an impact using emotion has. And anybody who's in book publishing will tell you about how stories sell, how stories drive the sales of books, for instance. We see this over and over in so many different places. And at the same time, everything that I'm saying here is backed by science. It's backed by research showing how effective these techniques actually are. Maya Angelou said it best, I think, they may forget your name, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Emotions also have a huge impact on behavior. And this is the core principles of this particular presentation. Emotions affect purchasing behavior. So let's talk about emotions. There are 10 basic emotions joy and sadness, anger and fear, trust and distrust, 
surprise and anticipation. And then two that are not opposite of each other, loneliness and jealousy. This is based on research in, in psychology for over a period of time. They vary in strength and what I call direction. So you can go on the left here and becoming more and more annoyed or on the right and be apprehensive or up and going serenity and joy you can be feeling or down and you will be uh, going into the grief and sadness and pensiveness. These are emotions that your clients have. So when you're trying to sell to them, what kind of emotions do they have? What stage are they going through? And the challenge is there's so many different emotions. You can split them down to the umpteenth degree and I would encourage you to go back to the recording of this and take a look at this wheel. Because they, when you're looking at it, you will see so many aspects that you may have not considered that your potential clients are actually going through. So what are they actually feeling? Are they excited? Are they eager? Do they feel worthless? Especially when you deal with life coaching, you deal with depression, self-worth. This comes very heavily into play. And are they frustrated or are they more than that? Are they really annoyed? Or are they infuriated? These three are very different emotions. And when you want to market to them, you've really got to consider what is your messaging that speaks into their messaging, the messaging that they have running through their head? What is the emotions that they're going through? How will they think about things when you get in front of them, when you're getting your message in front of them? Because when somebody's feeling eager or worthless or annoyed, they will respond to different content in your sales pages and in your presentations. They'll respond to different forms of communication. Somebody who's eager will often be looking at the big picture before would focus and going, yes, I really want to do this because I want to achieve something. Somebody's feeling worthless is often feeling very down and going into what we call the kinesthetic, which is all about emotions and how their body is behaving. And they have find it really, really difficult to start looking forward. What is your messaging addressing how they're feeling? Then it may also affect how much money they're willing to spend. Somebody who's eager and excited will be willing to spend more money than somebody who's just, yeah, this is good, for instance. So your messaging must match their emotions. To give an example, if your prospect is frustrated and annoyed, and this is actually true for quite a few of my uh, prospects because I help people solving their technology needs when it comes to the marketing. So I meet people who are going, okay, I have a landing page, I'm getting people's name on it, but I cannot get my email to go out and I don't know how to connect it and I'm so frustrated and I'm so annoyed about all of this. So if I go to them and saying, hey, if you're feeling excited and eager, here's the solution by my service and you'll get to having solved this, they won't be listening to me. I won't connect with them. They hear my words, but they won't feel it because I'm not matching their state. And if I'm not matching their state, we'll just be like ships passing in the night. But if I say to them, if you are feeling frustrated and annoyed that you can't do this. If you're struggling, feeling like you're tearing your hair out, there is a way forward for you. Then they'll start paying attention. Then they'll start listening and going, oh, what would that solution be? Now, have you ever experienced that when you're annoyed and you are angry with something and somebody comes past you and saying, hey, cheer up because it's all good and look at the bright side. How do you tend to react? 
often you'll react by being more frustrated, more annoyed, more angry, rather than actually going, yes, you're right. Everything is looking right. And that's the same with your prospect. If you are coming there and not matching the conversation they are having in their own head, they'll ignore you because they know you don't understand. This is where the empathy comes in. When you have empathy, you understand the state of their mind. You understand the emotions that they're going through and what they want to, where they want to be afterwards. So one of the questions you need to ask yourself, what is the journey that you will take your prospects on? What is the state they're currently in? That frustrated, annoyed, feeling worthless, having self-doubt, whatever that state is, or feeling overwhelmed by all the paperwork if you're an accountant. And what the state do you want them to be in when they finished with you, when they've gone through your program, when you have given them all the things you can give them so they're in a much better place? What is the emotional state they want to be in? Not the emotional state you want them to be in. What emotional state do they want to be in when everything is solved for them, when everything is looking absolutely peachy? You need to use the same language as your prospects are using. I use the word overwhelm a lot because I did interviews with people. I had strategy sessions with people and I listened to what they were saying to me. And when it comes to the technology, they're often feeling overwhelmed and they're feeling frustrated. So I use that word all the time when I'm doing my marketing. You need to dig deeper. You need to understand people's emotions and the motivations. So let's look at some examples from advertising. If someone is buying a home security system, are they buying it to deter trespassers or protect the loved ones from danger? If you're selling to a business, you are probably wanting to deter trespassers. If you're selling to people, to homeowners, most likely they want to protect the loved ones from dangers. Now, in 2007, I think it was, I worked with a security company. They were advertising in, in the, the directory we were publishing. And they had an ad that was directed towards deterring trespassers. And it didn't work. We changed it and it can be really simple sometimes. It's not a pretty ad. It's not gonna win design awards with anybody in, in an advertising agency, but the headline says, protect yourself, your family and your home. And it went from being an ad that didn't produce any leads whatsoever over to them closing three sales a week from that one ad. And these were high-end security systems in a very affluent area. This wasn't just installing an alarm that costing $200. They were way more expensive and extensive than that. The advertiser was ecstatic with the results that they were getting. Another example here. If somebody is hiring an inheritance tax attorney, what do they want to do? Preserve assets? or stop the government from taking money from the family. What will appeal more, do you think, to somebody preserving your assets? Well, actually, if the inheritance is invoked, then you're probably not around to see any effect of that. What you normally want to do when you're a person, at least, when you have family, is you want to make sure that your family gets that inheritance. So what did we do? we wrote what's called an advertorial. The advertorial starts with, why would you want to give the tax man 100,000 pounds of your children's inheritance? And this went to a very affluent area. And in the first month that we ran this, they went from getting maybe one a week, uh, well, sorry, one a month being interested to having 12 confirmed appointments. Not just people who were inquiring and saying, hey, I might be interested, tell me more. Based on this one ad, 
people have booked appointments, 12 appointments. And again, they were ecstatic with the results. Why did it work? Because the headline really hammers at home and saying, you're living in an affluent area, your house, your properties are worth a lot of money and the tax man's just gonna come and take it from your kids, from your children. And it made them feel the pain for their children. Why would I want to ensure that my kids are losing a hundred thousand pounds of my hard earned money? I need to go and speak to this attorney. Very, very powerful when you're using the emotion to get the reaction that you want. Now, do you think somebody buys a Ferrari because I need to get a car because I need to go and do my shopping and I need to go to work from time to time? Or do you think they're getting a Ferrari because they want to feel the pride of the accomplishment, show it off as a status symbol where people are looking at them and going, wow, they must be successful. The, the importance of, psych, of the psychology behind it, of how that person feels, underpins everything that Ferrari is doing in terms of attracting clients. Now, I wish I had an ad to show you how I brilliantly sold a Ferrari. I can't show you that, unfortunately. Now, Masandra, you're saying, what are some favorite books or resources that may have helped you tune into the psychology of your clients? The, First and foremost, if you're starting from scratch, then the, my favorite book is The, the Influence, the, the, the Psychology of Influence by Robert Cialdini. That is the place where you start. It shows you how he has the six, oh, actually seven, he added one later, but the, the first book covers six principles for persuasion, for tapping into people's subconscious and, and how that actually works. So that is a fantastic place to start. Now you might ask, when you are doing this, when you're going in on their emotions and you're tapping into what they are uh, and, and persuading them in this way, isn't it dishonest? Isn't it deceitful? Well, here's the thing, you cannot avoid evoking an emotion. You just can't av avoid it, right? At minimum, they're gonna be bored but they're going to be interested, their emotions. And let me say that again. You cannot avoid evoking an emotion. They're going to like you or dislike you. They're going to be bored or they're going to be interested. They could be angry by what you're saying, or they could love it. The question is, are you going to then choose to evoke the emotions that will help you and help them or you're going to leave it to chance ask yourself that are you going to leave it to chance what emotions you are evoking or you're going to go my target market the people i want to help the people who need my help am i going to target them with random things and maybe what I think in my own head that I want to sell or I'm going to do something that will actually make them come to me so they can get help. That is so important. Now we talked about attracting and we talked about connecting. The next stage is to convert them. How do you convert them? Well, what I do is I teach the trusted advisor method. And I can do an hour long presentation on trusted advisor itself. So we don't have time to do that, but let me give you the core of how you become a trusted advisor. You need to give. And to give, you need to be, first of all, generous with your time. You need to take time out to speak to them because when you take time out to speak to your audience, when you make yourself available, they will see you and they will like you and connect with you when you are generous with your time. You need to be invested in the people that you help. You need to be invested in their outcome. You need to be invested in their success. 
I have spoken to people who said, oh, I did coaching for a year with somebody and I didn't feel I got a lot of help from them. I didn't get a lot of feedback and I renewed. And as soon as I renewed, I made a, I knew I made a wrong mistake, uh, the, the wrong choice. And it, I just wasted two years of my time. And I ask you, is that how you want people to feel? Or do you want to say, I am putting you first? Because here's the, the secret. If you put them first, if you solve the problem, then you will make money. You'll get more clients. You'll be more successful because it comes across. It's so evident, so self-evident. When you are putting them first, it comes across in everything that you're doing. And that's how you build up a loyal tribe, a tribe that loves you. And when you have a tribe that loves you, and you get that testimonials from everybody and the new person comes into your group. If you have a Facebook group, so for instance, somebody comes in and says, hey, I got a question about this. And everybody's jumping in saying you need to speak to Steve because he's going to help you with this. Then you will feel what the difference is. You have to give value. In every single step of all of your interactions. And I'll tell you here about my my big uh, seminal experience with a strategy session. In March of 2020, I went into a strategy session with a company and I said, I have a challenge with one particular thing. I'm going to be a coach. I'm going to quit this job that I'm doing. I was doing a six figure job, a chief technology officer with a company at, uh, at the time. And I don't know what I'm going to be coaching in because I, I have such a wide range of experience and knowledge. I can become an IT consultant. I can do project management there. I can do uh, be a digital marketing agency. You know, there's so many different areas um, that I can go in and do. Can you help me? And they said, come into a strategy session and we are going to help you sort it out. We're going to, you're going to figure it out during our strategy session. We're going to give you what you need to do this. And I came into the strategy session and I told them and they went, well, here's the thing. What you need to do is you need to join our program. It's $10,000 and then we're going to help you with that. And I went like, but you were going to help me now. Well, that's what we do in the program. You just need to pay $10,000. Oh, okay. So, but how do I know that you're actually going to be able to do that? Well, you really need to join the program. And you went through the whole gamut of, of sales tactics and sales objections handling and trying to persuade me they didn't use these exact words but essentially they went to the your kids are going to despise you and your wife's probably going to divorce you if you don't actually buy into our program because the program will make you successful and if you don't, don't join the program you're going to fail it was that kind of hard sales i don't call that being giving value it turned me off that company completely and utterly. And if anybody comes to me, and I have done this, people have come to me and said, hey, what do you think of this company? Should you do it? And I told them about my experience. And they haven't gone and bought from that company. And the best of all, or rather worst of all, is that the company teaches the method they used in the strategy session. They teach you how to do strategy sessions in that particular manner. That to me isn't about giving value. And I didn't want to learn their ways of doing it. And by the way, I recognized every single trick that they were using. I have been studying sales, uh, psychology and persuasion and objection handling for a long time. So I was able to be strong enough to withstand it. But a lot of people aren't. A lot of people will sign up with them because they can't handle that kind of pressure. And here's the kicker. My dad, who was struggling, who was trying to create his own business, my dad would have signed up with him. And that for me is a heartbreaking thought. And actually having that experience is one of the key reasons that I'm teaching coaches today. Because I don't want coaches to have to go into that kind of mode to try to get sales. There's a better way of doing it. And that better way of doing it 
is the give framework, where you are generous, where you invested in their success, where you are giving value in everything you do. So when I'm doing a strategy session, I give people a plan for what they need to do. When they're confused and saying, what about, should I be doing that? Should I be doing this? And I go, you can do that, but you should do it after this. I wouldn't recommend that at all. And you need to focus on that. I give them the plan. And then I tell them what kind of support I can give them ongoing. And when I finished with a strategy session, people are looking for ways to make it happen, to work with me. I don't get objections. It's either right for them or it's wrong for them. And when I go through that, when they come to my course, they love what I'm doing and how I'm teaching it. And then the final one, E, you need to give. You need to have a deep empathy for everyone that you meet. You need to understand they feeling frustrated or overwhelmed or in pain of some kind. You need to understand what that pain is. You need to understand the struggles they're going through. So when you go to Google and you put in ideal client avatar and you look at what comes up, you're going to get, okay, John, he is 35 years old. He lives in Los Angeles and he's a sales manager with a car company and he has these hobbies. He's got these interests. He's reading, reading these books and he goes to the gym. That's demographic. That's not your ideal client avatar. What your ideal client avatar is, what is the struggle that they have that you can solve? What is the, the pain they're going through? So to give an example, my demographic are people who are coaches, who are in what they consider themselves to be in midlife and beyond. And they are, to a great extent, I would say heart-centered coaches. So they're not the business style coaches that goes in with fact and figures and try to slash your costs and things like that. They're people who are dealing with other people on an emotional level. That's who I tend to work with. That's my, that's my demographic, my ideal client. My ideal client is totally overwhelmed by everything they have to do. They don't understand how the pieces are all fitting together. They can't implement the technology properly to make it work. And they end up spending all of this time trying to make things work instead of coaching clients. And they're frustrated that they're not getting clients in because all of this technology and marketing and everything is stopping them from doing that. And they just want it to work. They just want to see the leads are coming in I want to see them converting into strategy sessions and I want to see them converting into clients, buying the products, buying the coaching, buying the courses, becoming one-on-one -on -one clients. And I don't want to hassle. That's what my ideal client looks like. My ideal client isn't a coach in the midlife who's dealing with heart-centered, who's already earning $600,000 a year and know exactly what they're doing with their marketing. That's not my ideal client because I don't have the pain that I am solving for people. I hope that makes sense for you. So think about in your business, how would that work for you? What are the emotions that the people have? What are they going through in their mind? What is stopping them from achieving their success? How do you speak to them at their level to be able to show them that you can help them and solve their problem? Now you might say, if they're coming into a strategy session and I start telling them everything they need to do, because that's what I do, I give them that roadmap. How do I make money? What you gotta be careful about is that you need to teach the what, and you need to teach the why. But you save most of the how for later. You might teach one small how, 
maybe two, but you keep back on the how. You don't give them a plan. So when people come into my strategy session, I will talk about the need to have a lead magnet, something that attracts people, something they look at your website and go, oh, I want more information about that. I teach you need to have that. I do not in the strategy session teach you how to create the lead magnet. I don't talk about the structure of it. I don't talk about the wording of it. I don't talk about anything to do with what it's going to look like. Is it going to be a template, a cheat list, a long video? None of that. If you want that, that's when you start paying me. But the information that I give in the strategy session shows you that I know what I'm doing and that I can help you. Because in that strategy session, I have deep empathy with your situation because you're my ideal client. I understand what you're going through. So when you're sitting in front of me, virtually, and I talk to you and you go, wow, Steve understands me. He knows what I need. He knows how to do what I need and I don't know how to do it. Then you are much more likely to buy my service. So think about what you are doing. First of all, on your website, if you already have a coaching business, how do you talk to them on your website? How is the, the phrasing on your website? There are so many websites that I go to in the coaching industry where people are saying, I do this, I do life coaching, I sort out these problems for people. It's I, I, I. Look at your own wording. Look at the emails you're sending out. How much are you talking about you? I understand what you are going through. I understand you might have these challenges. If you have this challenge, this is the best program for you. If you have these problems instead, you may want to consider this. And if you need somebody to talk to, let's have a talk, a, a discovery session, a strategy session, where we can map out the future for you, map out the solution that can work for you, a solution that you are likely to implement. There is no I in that. It's only about you. That's how you show them that you're invested in their success. That's how you give value. That's how you're generous with your time when you take the time to show them that map and you show them that you have empathy with them because you understand the situation. You know where they are at. And by the way, teach the what, the why, and you say most of the how. That's what I've been doing in this presentation. If you like what I've done in the presentation so far, put a yes in the chat. If that resonates with you, if you can see a little bit about how you can use this in your own business and maybe reposition what you're doing and how you're doing it, then I have achieved my goal for this particular session. Because I am practicing the, the, the uh, being invested. I just put on a five day summit, the Solopreneur Accelerator Summit. And to be eligible to speak at the summit, I said to the speakers, you have to give something of value. You have to give them tips, tricks, steps they can take in their business. I didn't want anybody to come in and do their canned presentation. In fact, one of the presenters had to rewrite the whole presentation because it started with, this is what I do. I have people doing this. Here are people who got results. Here's the testimonials. Here's my program. And here's how that program works. That literally was the presentation. And when I had worked with them, their presentation was, here is how you can benefit from this. Here is what you can do as your next steps. Here's the pitfalls, here's the benefits. And by the way, I do have a program that can help you with this. And here's some testimonials and what, or rather what people achieved when in my program. Now it achieved what I wanted the summit to provide practical things that people can do whatever stage you're at in your, your business. What you need to do is to establish yourself as the trusted advisor. And when you establish yourself as a trusted advisor by giving good advice, focusing on them and giving the value, 
that's when things will start to shift for you. That's when your reputation will be building in the industry. That's when people want to start working with you. In fact, I think there are a couple of people here who's come because I'm talking and want to support me, which is totally awesome and blows my mind. But that's how the trusted advisor works. So when you are giving them all of this value, many will try to do it on their own. But most of them will fail to do it on their own because it takes a lot more than just the knowledge of what you need to do. If we were all successful based on knowing what we're supposed to do, I can tell you I would have been a millionaire many, many years ago. It takes a lot more. And most of us will fail if we don't have a support network. Most of them will fail if they don't know how to do it. When, like a year ago, I didn't know how to give a presentation. If I had given a presentation a year ago, actually I was doing presentations, I was doing two to four minutes of presentations for the company that I was working with. And I was like a rabbit caught in headlights when I had to do that. And I had to, had to study and practice and figuring out the style that suits me for doing presentations. In fact, my son is here on the call as well, Jake. And he has huge credit from me for his ability to help me doing presentations, creating the presentations, running through with me how I'm doing them, what I'm including in them and everything, because I'm a total introvert. I hate being in front of people or used to hate being in front of people. And that's something that I have changed. <laughs> You're welcome, he says in the chat. It's something that I have been overcoming as an introvert to learn how to present. So when you have the missing piece to how, and you can help them, that's your secret source. That is what will enable them to be successful. So your next job is simply to get them to come back and pay you for your help, for your assistance. And then you help them become successful. You help them get through the program. You help them overcome the challenges in their life. And you give them your best because you are there to help and support. Knowledge doesn't solve much. It's the support network and the help that you put around that that is uh, so invaluable. Everything I teach, you can pretty much go on YouTube and find it. But I'll tell you, you have to look for a long time to find it. And I can help you and support you because I got that information right now. You can go to YouTube and look it up and you can try to implement it. But when you have a question, who are you going to ask? Well, I am there to help and support you doing that. Do you see how that works? So what is the problem that they have, the open people? How do you help them and support them? How do you make them successful? You need to set them up for a win. You need to set them up from the very beginning and show them exactly what they need to do to make them win. And they will become your biggest fan for it. Not everybody will succeed. You simple human psychology. You will have people who go through the program and fail to achieve what they need to achieve. And that is not your fault because that is the human psyche. But you owe it to them who are paying your money to solve their problems, to give them your very best shot at helping them get through it. Now, I also said before this presentation that I was going to show you four ways of growing your business because there are actually only four ways of growing your business. And I'm going to show you how that's connected to being the trusted advisor and the framework. The number one way to grow your business is to increase the number of sales, which means that you need to increase the number of leads and prospects. This is the only time I really get into numbers. Say you have two people out of 10 that convert. So you have 10 inquiries in a month, two of them will buy, you have two clients. If you can get that to being 20 people who's asking, you'll get four clients. 
you can be, get that to be 30 people, you'll get six clients. That's how that works. Just increase the number of leads coming in. When you attract people, instead of them having to struggle to figure out whether you can help them, when you attract them and when you connect with them, more of them will come into your business because they're starting to speak the word of mouth. They're starting to speak about you. They start recommending you. And when they see an ad for what you're doing or any text or any writing about what you're doing, more of them will get in touch with you. So that's number one, getting more people into your funnel, into your business system. You will grow. <clears throat> the second one is increasing how many of those buy. It's called your conversion rate. When you connect with people on an emotional level, when you sell them what they want to buy, because you have understood the psychology of them, you've understood what they actually want, what is the ultimate solution, and you're connecting with them, you will get more people buying. Your conversion rate will be going up. So if you go from two people out of 10 buying to three people out of 10, you increase your conversion rate by 50%. You also want people to spend more money with you more often. That's the third way of growing your business. And as a trusted advisor, people will buy more of your programs. They'll buy more of your products. They'll buy more of what you got to sell. I see that everything that I am doing encourages sales of certain products. I see the people I've been working with, how they're using that emotional, emotionally connecting with their target audience to sell more. Every time copy is rewritten to going from, I do this to, hey, this is what you're gonna get out of it. People buy more. And then the fourth way is increasing how much they're spending with you. And here is the great thing. When you are their trusted advisor, when you are the person they trust, and they trust to deliver the best for them. And you, they trust you to deliver the result that they want. They will buy your higher end coaching program. They will buy into your support structure where you are making sure that they are successful. That is the beauty. And those are the four ways of growing your business. Everything else you read about growing a business will tie back to one of these four. Anything you're reading about conversion rate optimizations and how you're trying different headlines and AP split testing relates back to one of these four. So with that, I have an invitation for you. I am doing a client attraction workshop. This is being held from the 5th of February to the 7th of February, 2021. And by the way, if you're on YouTube and watching this, I will be doing these on a regular basis, so do get in touch. But in that workshop, it is three days for $47, which is $15 a day, which is basically, if you're having Uber Eats or something like that, it's a lunch every day. And in this workshop, we're working on your business, going through how you're using this methodology to actually attract more clients for you how we're going much more into the how how are you doing this how would you use these methods to make your business successful so you gain clarity on your own coaching business model on what you're doing there and the outcome is i want you to have a marketing plan for the whole of 2021 where you know what you're doing to generate clients and we're also going to cover how you stay on track to build a thriving, profitable coaching practice. So if that's for you, if that's something you want to know more about, go to this link, gomr.link slash VBN, and Jake put that in the chat, and sign up for that because I would love to have you there. As a bonus, I said I held a five-day um, summit. We had speakers. We had between seven and eight speakers every single day and all of the recordings for that you'll get as a bonus if you come to the event 
and I would absolutely love to see you there. So with that, I am saying thank you very much for your time and for your attention. If you have any kind of questions, please, uh, I'm here to, uh, to tell you about that. You can put them in the chat and I will respond or, or Roger, if you want to let people unmute themselves if they want to do that. Yes, indeed. Uh, if you do have a question and uh, you're uh, not inclined to type it into the chat, please unmute and fire your question towards Steve. I just want to say what an excellent presentation, Steve. I don't necessarily have a question, but I think it's fabulous and with a great um, framework in which uh, if anybody on, on the line is interested in putting together a structure for a presentation. I mean, you did an amazing job. So uh, kudos to you and to Jake. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan. And if you came in late, Susan was actually one of the speakers at my summit as well and delivered a terrific talk on niching. And you'll get Susan's talk as well if you come to the event. And I'm speaking here. I believe it's the 9th of March, is it, Roger? So uh, I'll also be able to share with them then. So yes, thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Steve, on behalf of the EIN family of 71,000 entrepreneurs, we thank you. Thank you hugely. You, you've taken a really complicated issue and really distilled it down so that we can hear you. And we can hear you because what you shared was simple. Easy, easy to hear, easy to absorb. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. I appreciate that, Roger. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here with the Entrepreneurs International Network.